Hi everyone, it is February 18, 2019. I want to thank my subscriber for sending this along to me. This was posted just today. Other big one. Other big one. Rare mega storm in LA area could cause three times as much damage as major earthquake. What? Okay. Scientists call it California's other big one, and they say it could cause three times as much damage as a major earthquake ripping along the San, Estre uh, San Andreas Fault. Although it might sound absurd to those who still recall five years of withering drought and mandatory water restrictions, yeah, researchers and engineers warn that California may be due for rain of biblical proportions, or what experts call an arc storm. This rare megastorm, which some say is rendered all the more inevitable due to climate change, would last for weeks and send more than 1.5 million people fleeing as floodwaters inundate cities and formed lakes in the Central Valley and Mojave Desert. This according to the U.S. Geological Survey. Officials estimate the structural and economic damage from the Ark storm would amount to more than $725 billion statewide. In heavily populated areas of the Los Angeles Basin, epic runoff from the San Gabriel Mountains would rapidly overwhelm a flood control dam on the San Gabriel River and unleash floodwaters from Pico Rivera to Long Beach, says a recent analyst, um, said a recent analysis by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Read the full story in the LA Times. Wow. Okay. So, this was posted today. Uh, you will get more and more information if you read this article. But I have to say, I I'm really beginning to wonder if uh, some of these storms are not being generated on their own. Like, okay, man controlling weather. It has consequences. Are we not seeing inadvertent weather modification taking place due to man's interference, a phenomenal interference, in the natural processes, I, I do have to wonder, but the rush of water on the outside of the dam would rapidly erode it, releasing the rest of the water. So... How much did um, Alfonso The Corps is seeking up to $600 million in federal funding to upgrade the three-mile-long dam. Did I 
say what dam it was. It's the Whittier Narrows Dam. 60 years old. It no longer met the agency's tolerable risk guidelines and could fail in the event of a very large, very rare storm. Oh, you God. Yeah. So the other big one is not an earthquake, but massive, massive, massive flooding. Dam breaks, structural damage, and 105 million fleeing California. All you see could be underwater. So, standing atop the 56 foot dam recently, uh, Chitwood, Doug Chitwood, the lead engineer on the project, surveyed the sprawl of working class homes, schools, and commercial centers about 13 miles south of Los Angeles. And he said all you could see could be underwater. All right. Well, I thought that this was important to post. And if you have not seen this, you guys who live in California, um, you might want to check it out. The false sense of security included in the phrase 900 year flood combined with the promises of 20th century water infrastructure have put us in a bind. That's right. Has nothing to do with all of the weather modification taking place. Nothing to do at all. All right. Um, you know, you see all of these extremely low frequencies being set off. California, so many counties have weather modification. They hire uh, the North American, what is it called? The North American Weather Weather Associates or something, I don't know, and other companies to provide weather modification in California. It's not just California, Texas, my God, you, you've got your artificial rain through your Texas Weather Modification Association. They have YouTube videos where they put up the meetings of the Weather Modification Association um, with, the, uh, with the town councils um, Isn't it amazing that we can't get through to people? Isn't it unbelievably amazing that we can't get through to people? All right. I want to show you this article. Could this new Chinese radar system really be used to play God with the weather? It could have more alarming uses, such as causing natural disasters like hurricanes. This was posted June 2018, South China Morning Post. A radar system? Really? Powerful radar system in the South China Sea that critics say could knock out communication systems, manipulate the weather, and even cause natural disasters. It uses pulsed energy beams to study and manipulate electrically charged particles in the high atmosphere civilian and military applications. Yes. And it could even challenge U.S. dominance in both spheres. U.S. military has already been working on similar technology, but it has proved controversial, with critics warning that it could allow governments to play God by causing disasters such as hurricanes, typhoons, tsunamis. Oh, but then they downplay it. Yes, the American program funded by the Air Force, Navy, and universities. Well, this, what they're talking about, HARP. It faces an uncertain future due to budget cuts. <laughs> really? Well, now, 
in the 70s, there were hearings on the weather modification uh, conducted in Vietnam by our military. Senator Pell uh, held the hearings and our military, you know, the generals who showed up said, we did it in Vietnam, but we're not doing it anymore. And yeah, weather modification experiments and research and research and development and all that. Oh, well, Congress, they cut their budgets. Really? No. All they did was transfer the money from the Pentagon to, I think at that time it was Department of Interior. Okay. High-powered, incoherent scatter radar, which is the next rad radar that we use here in the United States. It would be capable of influencing the ebb and flow of sub-atomic particles as far away as Singapore, 1,200 miles. Wow, powerful radar system. I thought radar was just for, you know, tracking those planes up there. No. NEXTRAD radar is absolutely being used to control the weather here in the United States. Uh, the machine works by generating rapid pulses of electromagnetic energy and beams them into the ionosphere, a layer of the atmosphere that can reflect radio waves thanks to a high concentration of ions and electrons. By fine-tuning the high energy beam, scientists could also stimulate the lower ionosphere to generate low frequency waves and send these back to Earth. And they can cause earthquakes when they send those low frequency waves back to Earth. These waves can travel long distances through seawater and reach submarines in the deep ocean. Uh, yes, the United States has a similar program called HARP in Kokona. Alaska, um, and of course they say that the high frequency active auroral research program, it was just to study and manipulate the ionosphere. No problem. Oh, but building such a device was technically challenging and the power consumed by the project resulted in mounting costs. But we just happened to build more. <laughs> we just happened to build more such instruments, mostly by the United States. Oh, the crap mainstream media in every country. The crap they, they write. The largest devices can generate and beam extremely low frequency waves over large areas because they have the power to penetrate water, the Earth's crust, and the human skull. Some observ observers have warned that the governments could use the technology to set off storms or earthquakes and even control the brain. Oh, but mainstream scientists have dismissed such concerns as conspiratorial, arguing that the technology has so far been used to study the weather in space and support certain military operations, weather being used as a weapon, a military operation. They also point out how powerful the machines are. Oh, they do not at present have enough energy to manipulate weather. Isn't that interesting? It's an abject lie. You can read more. I'll link below to this, but you know what? It really doesn't matter because we can't get through to those who have closed minds. And the we've seen the, the, the destruction that they have already cur caused. You know, I was reading this article. Uh, what, what are you seeing here? Infrasound pulsations induce earthquakes by ionospheric lensing. Very interesting article about these earthquakes that have been induced 
by harp or harp like uh, facilities. The ultra low frequency broadcast from Alaska was focused on to the submerged fault line through the coordinated efforts, efforts of various ground based, sea based, and space based harp facilities. Yes, harp is is sea based and you'll see the picture in one moment but there's an awful lot of evidence that certainly suggests that Japan's earthquake and look at these numbers March 311 2011 311 2011 huh. okay well harp was working uh, and dozens of distinct emitters are they're focused on a single point in the upper atmosphere causing the formation of rows of rainbow colored parallel wavelets that expand into high altitude glowing circular plasma clouds there you go Yes, they can create what some people are calling, I guess, uh, plasma, it's natural, and a catastrophe is coming. And they seem to just completely ignore all of the technology that can create what you're looking at right here, that can create the blue light over New York City and all of the strange anomalies that people are seeing. A definitive infrared signature of ionospheric manipulation documented by satellite directly above the epicenter of the March 2011 earthquake. Circular formations of atmospheric plasma. Those harp nexrad rings that many spot on radar. Circular formations of atmospheric plasma, stunning harbinger of disaster that have been recorded on video above many mega quake events over the course of the last few years, including uh, the 2008 Sichuan, Sichuan China earthquake um, and the Bio Bio Chile earthquake. 30 minutes before the earthquake in China, this is what we see. Why am I bringing your attention to this? We can see very strange colorful skies and nothing happens but there are times when we'll see this kind of um, activity in our atmosphere and one should really pay attention to it I'm showing you this because these are signatures that portend disaster. Disaster. 30 minutes later, boom. And so many people died in that earthquake. The numbers are staggering. Induced by man. Um, also, here we go, artificially generated auroral formations act as lenses that reflect the ultra-low frequency waves back toward the Earth, eventually inducing a severe earthquake directly below the plasma formation. So this was uh, footage from Indonesia, which was posted January 2010, 
showing spectacular plasma formation rapidly billowing upward. <laughs> This is what some people are saying is all natural, and it's just some things in a natural catastrophe. But, well, I am saying that it's not natural, and that this is absolutely induced by the high frequency that we have, the low frequencies that are brought back down to the Earth through the atmosphere. This is not natural. This is pretty intense. Ah, video. multimedia. Is your next rad, your radar stations, mini harp stations that are all over, all over the country. Secretly weaponized next rad stations for ultra low frequency weather manipulation. Hence the name next generation radar. Ah, radar. We can use it to control the weather. It's a new generation of radar. It's unleashed hundreds of tornadoes, severe storm cells in the past year. And when was this? This this was on my um, God, I don't just in my um, it's 2011. Um, yeah, I remember all of the tornadoes that took out whole towns and the uh, tornadoes in Oklahoma, Missouri, all induced by man. Here we go. Here's our traveling sea-based harp station. This is, this is a weapon uh, extraordinary. I don't. Well, let me just bring your attention. Let me go through this again. Earthquake weapon. This is uh, United States Air Force. It's an abstract from 2025 technology. An earthquake weapon ultrasonic or acoustic weapon to destroy runways, buildings, bridges. The weapon will generate a very strong acoustic wave that causes structures to resonate and thereby destroy them. Ultrasonic waves. Gwen Towers. This is the Coulter, the Coulter, Maine, the Navy's uh, extremely low frequency transmitter site once and may still be I don't know the most powerful transmitter in the world these are Gwen Towers 
Gwen Towers are different from cell towers. Gwen Towers, very high antennas that have um, wires coming down in a circular pattern down into the ground. Gwen ground wave emergency network, ground wave frequencies, they can emit ground wave frequencies through the ground, ultra low frequencies through the ground, and cause an earthquake. That's why I say that whenever we see these ultra low frequencies that that they can also emit into the atmosphere that work that there these are the um here let me get to this is the high power extremely low frequency radiation generated by modulated high frequency heating of the ionosphere it can cause earthquakes cyclones localized heating or that very special and clearly quite rare other big one, the other big one, the other big one, this uh, rare mega storm, which apparently is going to last for weeks. Guess what? Are they prepping for another? hit on California? Are they, is this their experiment to see how long they can keep the rain going? How long they can keep a storm local to one area? Perhaps. But yes, HARP is currently the most important facility using uh, used to generate extremely low frequency electromagnetic radiation in the ionosphere. HARP transmitter radiates a strong beam of high frequency waves modulated at extremely low frequencies uh, coming back to Earth. And world, worldwide map of ionospheric heaters, extremely low frequency. This is Jim Lee's video. Um, ultra low frequencies in area and that was I don't know this is a video that I posted don't know how long ago but there was a 5.8 and 4 in California and you just so happen to have a whole lot of ultra low frequencies emitted in this area this is next rad radar Doppler radar how Nexrad Harp works turning natural storms into biblical mega storms. This is a signature of a Harp Nexrad ring that we do very often see on radar. That portends danger. Not saying that danger will absolutely occur, but it can. And in 2011, Dutch since was forecasting or predicting tornadoes right smack in the center of these harp rings, next red harp rings that were going off a whole lot in 2011. And sure enough, a tornado would hit. Harp next red. Now, extend this all the way out. These rings, while you can see them on radar because the precipitation well, the precip they can't hide the perfect circular pattern that is not, clearly not Mother Nature, but you extend it all the way. You full, uh, complete the circle, complete that circle, and nearing the center of the circle is generally where you're going to have... Uh, weather, dangerous weather. But here again is your uh, next red harp. I'm just showing you the signatures. Very clear and uh, going off in Canada an awful lot. Next red stations, Doppler radar sites. And this map, I don't know how old it is, but it is years old. I'm sure they have more stations. 
The ultra low frequencies are these defined lines that you can see in the precipitation. Uh, let me here you have these ultra low frequencies being set off, and this is in Nevada. This was a while ago. Okay, so 5 22 28. 2018. Uh, this is from last year. But these are um, scalar beams intersecting. And if you heard any bizarre noises, it could very well be from the scalar waves intersecting the scalar beams known to produce um, booms, booms. So the straight edged, the extremely low frequencies, they can extend up to 300 miles. Um, they, you can see them intersecting from other, either Gwen Towers or extremely low frequency transmitter sites. And they are, they're doing an awful lot of damage, to tell you the truth, <laughs> uh, with all of these frequencies because it's not just about controlling weather, it's also having a huge effect on all life because these artificial frequencies are so powerful and yes, they penetrate all life. But as you can see, all of the very defined um, lines, you know, in the precipitation. This is not how Mother Nature works at all. Not at all. So this is Cutler, and here you have the Clam Lake, Wisconsin, extremely low transmitter site, and well, they can, uh, the Gwen Towers, the extremely low frequencies, they can look like this on radar sites. But here you see this harp next ring, ring. You just have to look carefully. And once you begin to see, once you begin to get, okay, harp next right ring, then you go on these sites and you see them just that they, they jump right out at you. They jump right out. All of the extremely low frequencies jump right out. You can see, you know, it's like once you learn what to look for, it becomes very obvious. So I did this video and I was trying to point out all of the extremely low frequencies that were emitted in areas and voila, you had earthquakes. 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 So, um, make a storm. What can you say? We are in a war. We all know this. They're using weather as a weapon. Unfortunately, they're not dropping bombs. That would tell everybody, oh, we're at war. Instead, we have weather being used as a weapon and mainstream media reporting it as natural and there's nothing natural about it because all one has to do is do the research to find out that our military and other militaries around the world have been controlling the weather for decades. All links are below.